Hi, and welcome back to Mad About Cards and Crafts. Today is my crafty collaboration with my friend Kathy Aranzana. I will have her video linked in the description box below. Today we've decided to use background stamps. I'm going to jump right into my project. I have a piece of six by four and a quarter inch B, 100% cotton watercolor paper. As you can see, I've removed the foam from my Misty. This is a red rubber stamp that's six by six. It's from the town. It's called Rose Terrace and I'm going to be doing uh, using a lot of water so I wanted to make sure that I had a really good watercolor paper down. Uh, there are some watercolor papers that take water better than others. This is one of the ones that is fantastic if you're going to be using a lot of water. So I'm using that purple tape to tape it down. I'm creating just a little bit of a border. I will end up cutting this panel down to three and a half by five. So there's the stamp. I'm going to remove the paper backing, center it onto my stamp, close the door of my Misty, and then we're going to use Art Philosophy Oil Pastels. I'm using the Rustic Collection. This is a fairly inexpensive set of oil pastels. They're similar to a gelato, a little bit creamier, uh, similar to the Tim Holtz crayons, which I don't have those, but I'm imagining that it's going to be a very similar process. So if you have those, this would work just as well. I'm scribbling some color onto the roses. I started with a cobalt blue, and then I brought in a violet color. These are very vibrant, which I really enjoy. They are more, I guess you could say that there's more of a fall theme in here, but I was able to get a spring color using the color combinations that I have. I will not color all of the roses. There are some spots on this that quite honestly, I wasn't sure whether they were leaves or whether they were roses. So I'll color what I do know and in no particular order. So I end up with a little bit more of a purple undertone, and you're going to see why as I go through the process, but uh, I do add a, quite a bit of the cobalt blue. Here I'm using the olive to color in the leaves. Once I start coloring in the leaves, then I can see where I missed on the flowers. So rather than having to remove the oil pastel, it was much easier for me just to skip those sections until I colored in some of the leaves to figure out whether or not it was part Part of the leaf or whether it was part of the flower and I'll find that some of those areas really were the flower. So here's one of them and I'm just going to finish off those spots. I will add a second color. I wanted to make sure that I had some nice color variation. I closed my door a little bit. I was making sure that I was reaching far enough down and across making sure that I had enough of the coloring on my uh, stamp and this is the second color that I'm adding. I'm adding a little bit of the cobalt green to the leaves. I will bring my finger in just to make sure that I don't have any harsh, harsh edges and it blends beautifully. I'm adding some water to my paper. I added some water to my stamp so you can see already that I have a lot of water and I probably oversprayed my panel. You'll see that I do get a little bit of pooling, but that's okay because I will come in with my microfiber cloth and soak some of that up, which is an easy thing to do. I'm going for an uh, abstract, impressionistic feel on this card. I do not want sharp lines. I want it to have more of that abstract feel. There you can see the pooling that I got, which is just fine. I'm using my Ranger heat tool. I prefer this type of heat tool to a heat gun because it does spread out the heat and you're not getting a lot in one spot. It's spreading it out over the entire panel. There I'm soaking up the excess. Now I'm going to add a little bit more water because I do have some more of that oil pastel on the stamp. I'm going to give it a good stamp to try to get a little bit more of the ink off and then I'll do it one more time. And I could have rubbed it with my finger as well, which would have loosened up some of the ink, but I wanted to try to get a little bit more uh, definition on this. So not so much of a blob, but more definition. And I want a little bit more. So I'm going to bring in Distress Oxide in Shaded Lilac. I'm going to stamp my uh, 
stamp. <laughs> I'm going to ink my stamp, I should say, and I'm going to, uh, to just remove the ink from the florals. I'm not going to do a great job of it, I, you know, just enough that it's not going to change the color of those leaves to purple, which is not what I want. And then I'm going to add the ink to my card panel. Here I'm almost done. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe and ring the bell so that you're notified whenever I do upload a video. I want to thank those of you that have uh, subscribed recently. Welcome. I added some water to the stamp and I'm picking up just the uh, residual ink using a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock, and I'll be able to use that card panel for a second card. Here, I did not have any water in my craft room. I just sprayed a little bit of the distress sprayer with water onto my Misty and onto my uh, paintbrush, and then I've laid down a little bit of that cobalt blue color. I felt like, uh, even though you can see that I have a little bit of an undertone of blue, I wanted to to add the cobalt color, which is significantly different than the lavender. And so I am simply watering it down and painting it on. Initially, I did get a little bit more in that upper left hand section, and I'm going to work at that to try to thin it out and uh, lighten it up. So one of the things that you have to remember when you're putting down any type of watercolor or uh, gelato or something like that, it is going to dry back. So I do try to dry in between to see just how far this is drying back so that I don't under uh, color the panel. And I'll come in shortly with my heat tool and dry it out. I'm not worried about moving any of the other colors. If it mixes in with that blue, it's just fine because none of them are going to mud. So the green and the blue will go together nicely. The purple and the blue will go together nicely. So if anything bleeds, it's gonna be just fine. And I'm not being very careful to make sure that I'm painting this perfectly. As I said, I'm going for more of an abstract look. And I love the feel of this. It feels like a, uh, it feels like an oil painting. It, I mean, it's just an absolutely stunning card. It turned out just exactly as I envisioned. And, uh, yeah, I really would like to try this with some of my other regular clean stamps. Here you can see I've added quite a bit more water. You can see the pooling of that water in some of the areas, which is just fine. As I said, I've taped this down and this paper does take a lot of water. I will have all the products that I used listed in the description box below. I'm not going to show you how I put this card together. I'm going to talk you through the process and I'll show you the other products that I used. So I'm drying this off and now we're going to do the reveal. And you can see I do have that quarter inch border. I will bring in my Tim Holtz Deckel Trimmer. I love that new trimmer. It's a new addition to my craft room and I am a deckled edge fan. So there is the beautiful Rose Terrace stamp from the ton. I'm using the fancy label frames from Pink Fresh Studio for my sentiment. I'm using the two smallest ones right there. From Sentiment Sweet Thinking of You, I'm using the Sentiment Sending Warm Thoughts. Obviously, I use those oil pastels. I'm just going to give you a look at all of the colors that are in that box. I use the shaded lilac for stamping. And then I have this Nouveau Shimmer Spray. This Nouveau Shimmer Spray is, um, what's it called? It's called Lavender Lining, and I painted it on the deckled edge using that paintbrush. I did pop up my panel using some foam. As I said, it's cut to three and a half by five. The black is cut to four by five and a quarter. And then my card base is four and a quarter by five and a half. That paintbrush is from uh, Wonder Forest. 
And I'm going to show you a couple other cards that I created doing a little bit of uh, embossing, heat embossing. I did stamp my sentiment out using that VersaFine. And I'm going to be using, on those two panels, I used a Delusion Spray and two Lindy Stamp Gang Sprays. And I heat embossed using copper. I just wanted to show you what a different look you can get. On the smaller card, I backed it with a piece of copper metallic paper. And I used a Spellbinders uh, square die to create a card panel. And so I just wanted to show you that uh, with the turquoise behind it and the black behind it, I'm getting a two different looks. There's the last look at the stamp set. I'll show you a close-up of my card. I want to thank you so much for watching today. I will have uh, some other videos linked at the end of this. And until next time, have a fabulous day. Thanks again for watching.